So in looking back through my videos, it looks like I made this original mallet seven years ago, or roughly. And when I made this, I had a supply of this tropical hardwood. And I remember, because of the dimensions of that wood, that, that was kind of the idea for the mallet, was that it fit within that dimension really nicely. I could, I could joint two of those pieces together, get this nice joint, and then turn that into a mallet and be done. But, <laughs> from what I've heard from talking to a, a few different people, is that this nice tropical hardwood, which is sort of was a, was a step up from pallet wood. It was the wood that steel would get shipped on and it would. So it needed to be a, a much harder wood than just, you know, pine or something like that. At the time, I had a source for this, and I could get it fairly cheaply. So I, I wasn't too worried about making mallets. Well, I, I waited a couple years, and it, it turned out there was a shipper's strike or, or, or a dock worker's strike. The, the story I've heard is that the powers that be sort of decided to ship steel to Canada and not to Portland anymore because of that strike. So because of that, this nice wood doesn't show up in Portland anymore, and I don't have a source for it anymore. So my plan this year is, is to make a batch of mallets, use up the few pieces I have left to make heads for the mallets. And I'll just use sort of maple or cherry or something for the handles. And that, that'll be the set of mallets that I'll make. And I'm, th I'm thinking the, the handles, I'll probably have to glue up two pieces with a seam, but I think that's okay for the handles. The other wood that I have for the heads, most likely, is I cut up some oak with my friend Trent, I think two years ago now. And I, I cut a bunch of those at the sort of dimension I needed to make mallets. And I cut up a piece and I checked it with the moisture content meter and it's still a little wet. It's like 16 or 17 percent, which is, seems a little, a little on the wet side. Um, so I think I'm going to have to wait to use these at least another year. But what I'd also like to try is maybe making sort of segmented heads or, or do heads that are more purely decorative, not something I'd want to hit anything with, but try and find a way to make mallets without this source of tropical hardwood. <laughs> the idea with this mallet design is that the head and the handle are joined with a, I guess I would call it a radial joint, sort of a bunch of fingers, I guess, that fit together. My first thought with making a decorative head was to take birch plywood and make sort of a woven pattern with it. Sort of use the linear side grain of the plywood and make it into a checkerboard pattern. So it sort of looks like a, a woven basket. What I needed to do is to cut segments to make rings to make the head on the mallet. But to do this woven design, I needed to rotate the edge of the plywood 90 degrees. So I made some strips where I cut the plywood into small pieces and rotated them 90 degrees and glued them back together into strips that I could then cut into triangular segments. <laughs> and this will give me the grain running 90 degrees to how it would normally run in the plywood. Then I can cut a strip of plywood that I haven't cut up into segments and I can cut up the strip that I made with the rotated grain, rotated edge I guess. <laughs> then I can make a ring with an even number of segments, so I pick 12, and I can intersperse the two types of segments and this gives me a ring with edge pattern or sort of edge grain running at 90 degrees to each other as it goes around the ring. Then when I stack the rings up, I can rotate them by one segment. I can sort of get a woven pattern. <laughs>
Once the rings were glued up, I could sand all the faces. This is a, the same drill that I always do. <laughs> and I can glue all the rings together. I didn't have to worry about the center too much as that was gonna be inside the mallet. I did make one ring that was different. It was made up of all pieces with the grain rotated. So I could put that on the top or sort of the end of the head as that's how I wanted the pattern on the end of the mallet to come out. Another idea I had for a decorative head was to glue some pieces of bamboo plywood together. Now this is the same bamboo I used in the kitchen and on the Death Star that I did a few years ago. I basically just glued up a block of this bamboo plywood. I liked how the glue squoze out. <laughs> And this is how the birch plywood head is coming out. I managed to get my end piece to come together perfectly in the center. And I cut some heads out of the dunnage wood. These will just be simple pieces of wood. I worked on making handles. So I had a piece of maple and a piece of cherry. The maple, I think was eight quarter, so it was roughly two inches. So I could just glue two pieces together and have a seam down the middle. With the cherry, it was a little thinner. I'm gonna guess it was six quarter. So sort of an inch and a half. So after joining it, it's gonna end up being a little smaller than three inches if I double it up. I also found a eighth inch piece of walnut and my idea with the cherry handles was to sandwich the walnut down the middle or sort of down the seam so you'd have a racing stripe down the handle make the seam celebrated a little bit and it would give me the thickness I need for the handle so I glued the two cherry halves with the walnut sandwiched in between I find a, a popsicle stick works pretty well for spreading the glue around. It's faster than a brush when you have a big area like this. And you get a, a fairly even thickness of glue. And it's just a matter of clamping these together. Once the glue was set up, I could joint the faces and get it somewhat close to a square and then cut that piece into lengths that I can make into handles. So I think the head pieces, I was cutting at four and a half inches long and the handles were seven and a half inches long. I had some leftover pieces once I glued up what I had been working on. So I thought it would be neat to make a piece where the walnut is four-sided in the middle. It sort of makes a cross in the center or an X. So I glued up two smaller halves and then glued those two halves together, trying to get the walnut to come together in the center. <laughs> then I cut that down to a square section, try and get it close to a square with the X in the middle. <laughs> cut that into handle pieces. I can start to work on the joint between the handle and the head. I made a jig a few years ago for holding the pieces upright on the CNC table. It's basically a wooden clamp. So I can cut the joint into the two ends. It's a really good idea to flatten the end with the CNC before cutting the joint. This will make the two halves be exactly the same depth, which is important for this joint. I found some blocks of walnut that I made a few handle pieces from, and I can cut those to length. And I can cut the joint into the end of those walnut pieces. I cut the joint into the birch plywood piece. I made sure I put the right side up as I had a special piece on the end. And the birch plywood cut nicely. Then I cut the head for the bamboo plywood, and that actually cut well. I was a little bit worried because the, the bamboo feels like it's so hard, but it cut just fine. 
then I can glue the head and the handles together. I was having the CNC cut the joints as I was gluing up the ones that were finished. I found if I put the glue sort of as a ring in the center of the joint, then I could spread the glue outward into the fingers of the joint. I just put glue on one side, then I could put the other side in place. It was a little tricky getting them lined up, and I could just clamp the two pieces together. Once I had all of the blanks made, I wanted to make a piece on the end that I could hold with the lathe and the CNC. I figured I wanted to use as little of the nice wood as I could get away with and use sort of cheaper or free wood on the parts that were gonna get cut away and I was gonna hold on to with the lathe. So these get glued on the handle end in the center and it's just a matter of putting glue on and getting it centered. The hole in the middle let me see through to the center if I had that marked or to the piece of walnut that ran through the handles. On the other end, which will be the tailstock end, I wanted a little piece with a hole drilled in it. And gluing this piece on lets me make the piece that I cut for the head about half an inch shorter. I don't have to put the hole for the tailstock into the end of the head piece. So it's sort of a, a throwaway scrap piece glued to the end. And I can put one on the birch plywood head and then just get clamped in place. Up to this point, the project has been all about addition. It's been about adding pieces together. After this point, it's going to be all about subtraction. I basically have the blanks made, and now it's a matter of finding the mallet that's within each one of these. I've heard it said with, with sculpting that it's easy. You just remove all of the material that's not the sculpture. <laughs> I have a template I cut out, and I can use that to just do a quick outline of the shape of the mallet. And this will just be a guide on the bandsaw to cut off the extra material that I don't need. And I did one side, and then I can glue those pieces back on again, the hot glue gun. I figured out pretty quickly that I only had to put one of these sides on, the side that's up. The side that's down, I don't need. And I can cut out the material I don't need. And I tilted the big bandsaw table so I could cut the corners off. And this will remove a little bit more material. I had a little bit of a factory going. <laughs> I was trying to get as many machines going at once. In trying to save a little bit of time, <laughs> I set up the mallets on the fourth axis on the CNC machine, and I could do sort of a rough pass to get a lot of the material removed and get to something of the shape of the mallet, but it still isn't finished at this point. This is really just removing a bunch of material and getting to where I can put it on the lathe and spin it quicker right at the beginning and I have a shape that I can work with, and I'm not having to find the mallet every single time I put it on the lathe. So that was sort of the, the generic mallet, and then I have the birch plywood mallet, which cut just as well. I was a little worried the, the plywood was gonna get all frayed or be fuzzy or something like that, but it was fine. Then I can put the mallets on the lathe in sort of a second step, and I can get it much closer to finished. So the CNC gets me 90% there, and then I can finish it up on the lathe, depending on how well I got the joint centered and, and whether there's any defects in the wood or anything like that, I can then shape the mallet based on that. I can spend the time doing the final shaping and the work that I really need to do and not have to spend my time just removing material. That's what the CNC machine can do. I guess my argument would be that it isn't any less art just because I'm putting it through the CNC machine. It's just speeding up the process a little bit. <laughs>
it was taking about four minutes to do one mallet on the CNC. And then it would take me half an hour or so on the lathe to finish it up. I was trying to have the CNC work while I was on the lathe, so I could kind of get two things done at once. I did have one that I didn't run through the CNC, and I carved that entire mallet on the lathe. And with my big roughing gouge now, it's actually pretty quick to get it to where I can start shaping it. I think it's longer, I didn't time it, but I think it's longer than four minutes. And I'm just running through a bunch of the different mallets here. I would do the wood turning and the shaping and then do all the sanding all at the same time. Once I take the mallet off, it's very hard to get it in exactly the same location again without it wobbling. Once I had the mallet shaped and with a sanded finish on it, I could cut the end off. And I have a steady rest I made for small objects. And I can put the mallet in that steady and I can do the end. And the first few I tried wood turning the end, which worked okay. But what I figured out was that I could put a fairly rough carving disc on my grinder and I could shape the end of the mallet just as quickly, if not quicker, than the wood turning tools. And it seemed to put less stress on the steady. I could kind of gently make the shape on the end of the mallet head. Then I had a big sanding disc on my drill with, I think, a 40 grit sandpaper. And I could do a little more shaping with that and smooth out the roughness from the grinder disc. Then I was ready to start sanding and I could sand the end. And this went pretty fast because it's just the end. It isn't very big. And it was mostly a matter of getting the shape right and getting the finish to kind of wrap around the head. Then once the heads are all done, I can do the end of the handle. I'm gonna save all of those pieces I cut on the CNC for future projects. <laughs> and I can do the same thing on the handle end. I can sort of carve it into a shape that I like with the grinder and then sand it and get the finish to wrap around the end of the handle. I re-sanded a few of them on the handle and the head just where the wheels had been running. Most of them, it didn't really leave a mark, but there were a few I wanted to re-sand just a little bit. This was a lot of keeping track of sandpaper and changing sandpaper, <laughs> as the thing I was sanding was really small and would go really quick. I really like how the birch plywood head turned out. It really looks like a woven basket. Like it's a whole different material from what it is. The last thing I wanted to do was to put my initials in the end of the handle. So I have a V bit in the CNC and I made a jig that'll hold the handle. And I can just put my initials into the end of the handle. This took almost exactly one minute for the CNC to cut. So it took longer to load and mount the mallet than it did to actually cut it. <laughs> then I can put finish on. I put finish on the handles first. Then I came back a day later and I hung all of the mallets with string from the handles and I could put finish on the head. I have one request. I would love any information about how to get this tropical hardwood dunnage wood that steel is shipped on. Thanks for watching.